uh, hey there guys and welcome to our Dia de Muertos uh, festival extravaganza over here. All right, so what you're seeing right now is just the basic structure of a, of a, of an ofrenda for Dia de Muertos. So can you explain a little bit about the, the structure? Yes, you will need, uh, of course, this kind of flower that it's a marigold. It, if you don't have one uh, or this type, you can uh, use every other kind of flower. Yeah, marigolds were used by the Aztecs because of their color orange. Orange uh, for the Aztecs was kind of the color for mourning. When someone was remembering a loved one, they used the color orange to symbolize that. Also, we will need um, candles, the dead people, uh, to help them to find, find their way. way. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We show the way from the for the uh, world of the dead, Mictlan, to the world of the living. That path is shown using the marigold flowers and the candles. Also, you will need some salt. To purify the soul. Yes. And this is the legendary pan de Bread. muerto, bread <laughs> of the dead. So bread of the dead is a traditional Mexi Mexican pastry. And it's shaped in the, if you could show it to the camera, it's shaped in the, in the shape, sorry, of skulls, of skulls and bones. The famous calaveras or sugar skulls, chocolate skulls. There can be, they can be made of many different uh, materials. We actually got some made of amaranto for our ofrenda. Traditional is made of sugar, but uh, you can also use amaranto. Or chocolate. Oh, and chocolate. naturally, each of these skulls represents one person that you're offering, uh, that you're making the offering to. Uh, in the case of this particular altar, we're making it in the name of our deceased grand grandfathers, both uh, maternal and paternal grandfathers. And each skull traditionally has the name printed on the skull. Uh, here's actually our very handsome grandfather, uh, Erasmo Núñez. I'm actually named after him. Pretty important, the cut paper. Yeah, the fact <laughs> paper. Uh, you also will need, naturally, pictures of the recently deceased. That's a picture of our late grandfather. And they are also going to be put in the altar in addition with the skulls and the food. The dead people, you left food here. The favorite dish of the dead people. And fruit, fresh fruit. Uh, we believe that this fruit lost his flavor after the day of the Exactly. The you death. leave it there for the for the death for the dead spirits. Dead spirits come to the altar. They eat with you. Eat. So yeah, Miklatekutli is the god of the underworld. Its name in Aztec basically means the king or lord of Mictlan. In Nahuatl. In Nahuatl. Sorry, yeah, in Nahuatl. Okay, so we were we were talking about Miklantecutli, that guy at the top of the altar, the Aztec god of the dead. And he actually offered, he wasn't a merciless god, he was actually pretty laid back and actually wanted more people to come over to his realm. He was kind of lonely and he liked to party. So in order to make sure that people would also arrive to this place, he would send a very friendly companion to guide them on their journey. This little guy called the Xolotl. It's a minor deity. Uh, think of it as a little dog without any hair. And he would actually guide these people throughout the entire journey that it took them to reach Mictlan. One of the other common elements that we have on our on our traditional ofrendas in Dia de Muertos is the Catrinas. Could you point out the Catrina? Is this very uh, funny looking, funny looking uh, skeleton skeleton lady? It's dressed very elegantly because this all started actually as a parody of Mexican women that although they were born here in Mexico, they would try to emulate the European style of elegance and clothing. Counterpart, her counterpart, which is the Catrine, the male equivalent. They're always very elegant. We like our uh, calacas, our skeletons, 
to be always joyous and elegant. This one is made of sugar. sugar. It's the kind, the other kind you can put in your offering. Ah, and one very important thing about the skulls that we forgot to mention is, like we told you, each skull represents one one person that you're making the offering to. However, it is customary to also leave one uh, one additional skull, and that is supposed to represent the lonely anima or the lonely soul, because there will always be people who no longer have any relatives or friends or anyone to remember them by. That's why traditionally every offering has an extra skull for all of those people that have no one left to remember them, but they would also like to come and party with with some friendly people, have a good time. And that's why you only always leave an extra additional Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, yeah, right. That's so big. You will find it on Mexican the Coke. It's the real thing. People love Mexican Coke up here, actually. Yeah, because it still has uh, real sugar in it, not uh, corn syrup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. There's actually a little bit of an economic explanation because of, uh, for that, and that's that uh, a few years back, it was actually cheaper to buy Coke on a town in the middle of nowhere that buy clean water. That's yeah, why we sometimes. are so dependent on Coke. So many people. All right, and we also have a few of our players. So this is Joao, no. Joao. 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 Joao, okay. So one of our dead explorers of our Comic-Con prototype, yay! Yeah, a few months back, uh, some might recall that we we distributed a digital product, a narrative prototype of our game. And a lot of people helped us put that together, and all of them died during the during our game. So naturally, we're going to make an offering <laughs> in their memory. Bobcat, you may know this one. So this is one of our coolest players. Sadly, right now he's working, but this is Avatar, Avatar of Chaos. Avatar oh, Chaos. yeah! Killed by Maya Arrows just at the moment of escaping. Yeah, he took them with lots of... Uh, uh, I don't know, with bravery. <laughs> yeah, he died like a champ. <laughs> yeah, Chava, um, Dr. Manhattan, he's the one who drew all of this. So let's wow. see. Ah, this is actually one of my favorites, this, this one. This is an interesting way in order to find um, what story possibilities could be interesting for our players, because we had so many dead Spanish in the Comic Con prototype. So another one, and that's Ben, yeah! Killed by one of the Tlacatecolotl. Tlacatecolotl is an owl-like monster in service of the death. And, and Ben had the awesome idea to disturb its altar and, well, yep. there's the consequences. The Aztec gods could be very chill when you respected them, but if you mistreated any of their followers or their creatures in any sort of way, they were completely ruthless. Have you already explained the Pan de Muerto? Yeah, yeah we already covered the, okay. the Pan de Muerto. And that's surprising, something that Spain also has. I always believed that it was something related to the Aztecs, but no, it comes from Spain. Yeah, the shape of the, of the bones in the bread of the dead, that's actually a Mexican... Um, input, but the bread itself was brought from Spain. Next. We would usually have some sort of uh, incense. Um, incense, mist, but naturally we would get very cloudy here. And with lots of heat. So we're going to include it, but not actually turn it on. So we should have a drink maybe in order to celebrate that we finally get this super cool offering up together with you guys. Um, yeah, 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 I'll open something. Prepare yourself a drink as well. <laughs> and just as a side note, the mariachi band, the, the mariachi band that is at the very middle of the of the altar. Uh, could you point this out? The mariachi band. Um, that's obviously not an Aztec tradition because they didn't have mariachi. But it's to symbolize the festivity of ha the the happiness, the festivity of having our loved ones once once more with us on this very special day, because we don't we don't want them to feel sad or abandoned, but rather to celebrate the the life that they have and to be happy that they can be with us one day a year. So anything we can add to our altar 
to help uh, maintain this positive outlook, this festivity is greatly appreciated. Traditionally, this is done by putting these skeletons partying around, fooling around, drinking, dancing, eating, etc., etc. Enjoy Dia de Muertos. Take care. See ya. Yeah.